What's up, Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, as WWDC 2015 gets closer, a whole lot of info about iOS 9 has been revealed thanks to the team at 9to5Mac. Now, according to reports, Apple is preparing a new iOS 9 feature that will combine Siri, Contacts, Calendar, Passbook, and third-party apps to create their equivalent of Google Now for the iOS platform. It's codenamed Proactive, but not to be confused with the skincare products Adam Levine promotes. Right at the very beginning of being in the band, we would play shows and I had acne. But I can tell you firsthand, the solution is Proactive Plus. Now, its goal is to provide timely information based on what a user is doing at the time and their data patterns. Proactive is expected to be shown off at WWDC and will be found on the left side of the home screen where Spotlight used to live in hopes that it will boost its usage. Now, this sounds great, and I've always been jealous of Google Now and Google's voice recognition, but Apple is going to have to take a major leap to best Google's brand new Now on Tap feature. That takes Google Now to the next level, and the reality here, Apple is just plain catch up. Now, Apple will finally released transit directions in iOS 9 after it was pulled before WWDC last year. Apple plans to debut bus, subway, and train route navigation to upgrade the Maps app, but don't get too excited just yet. Reports say it will only support a half dozen cities on launch, including New York and San Francisco in the US. Canada will only get support for Toronto, and the first supported cities in Europe will be London, Paris, and Berlin. Also, Apple Pay will be bringing a rewards program to WWDC, according to the New York Times. Details are scarce, but people familiar with the service say Apple will be offering perks to consumers who make purchases with the service. I'm pretty excited because I could just imagine using something like Apple Pay to buy a meatball sub at Subway and getting an extra meatball. Hey, look. It's an extra meatball. Thanks, Apple Pay. And that sandwich was good. All right, 9 to 5 Mac reports iOS 9 will also bring a new app called Home, which will work with Apple's HomeKit platform in an attempt to control the connected home and its myriad devices on your iPhone, iPad, and even Apple Watches. So we'll see how Apple's vision of the smart home starts coming together after its introduction last year at WWDC. Now, Apple will also be using its own design San Francisco font that was developed for the Apple Watch and integrating it into iOS 9 as well as OS X 10.11 to really give it a fresher look and feel. Developers have already hacked OS 10 Yosemite, so you can get a good feel of how it will look like right here. Overall, guys and gals, don't look for any major new groundbreaking features in iOS 9 and OS 10 10.11, codenamed Gala. The focus here is really quality and refinement with a lot of under the hood optimization. So think of it like Snow Leopard back in the day. Now the company has even been working on ways to optimize iOS 9 to run more efficiently on older iPhones and iPads. So we'll see it all on June the 8th. Now shifting gears to the rumored Apple TV. Recode reports Apple reportedly wants to include live local programming in their Apple TV streaming bundle, but seeing a reveal at WWDC might not happen. Apple wants to include live local programming from TV stations to broaden the appeal, especially with people trying to cut the cord entirely. But you know, it takes time to get individual local TV deals signed. Now, my own sources working on video shoots with Apple told me while they were on set, they were interacting with entirely blank screens with iPhones and iPads, and directors told them to swipe from right to left to get to the live TV feature. They were talking about it like a feature that didn't exist, but they had to use it for their advertisements or tutorial videos. So, Get ready, it's coming, even if no deals have been signed. Now, in some Apple Watch news, Apple Senior VP of Operations, Jeff Williams, revealed at the Code Conference that this fall, native watch apps will finally be made possible, so you won't have to wait those annoying five to 10 seconds for an app to load from the iPhone first. I know, first world problems. Now, he says Apple will be releasing a dev kit for native watch apps at the conference. Now, when asked about Apple's car project, he said the car is the ultimate mobile device. Giving a little wink wink at the rumors that Apple is working on a car of its own for 2020 with the code name Project Titan. And let's just forget about the Apple Watch Edition. We showed you a service that charges $400 to turn your watch to gold. Well, how about a do-it-yourself home kit for $115?
The Midas Touch Kickstarter will allow you to gold play your own watch with 24 karat gold. There's also a package for 159 that covers the entire watch and a band. It's an electrochemical reaction that bonds the gold atoms to the steel and they can be removed with a polish if you want it back to its original state. Pretty sick. All right, guys and gals, let's get to our feedback of the week from last episode. This one comes to us from Carlos Lopez, who says, had to fast forward the beginning because Brian just ain't funny. I'm starting to dislike him a lot. But Carlos, you still watched the entire rest of the video. And an honorable mention goes to Don Angel, who said, I thought it was just me that licked my products. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email me at the Apple Byte or tweet me at Brian Tong. I know this is longer than expected, but I'm going to throw my Apple Watch review in next week because, come on, barely anyone has one anyways. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you all next time for another bite of the Apple.